So welcome again to my um, home-based uh, exhibition stand. Um, I keep thinking I should charge Pico for uh, exhibition space here, but uh, with Pico equipment, of course, you don't need very much room. And so I'm not sure it's worth it. Anyway, here we are uh, with, uh, I've got two 9400s here. I've got a four channel 16 gigahertz unit on the bottom. I've got five gigahertz on the top here. Uh, this is a uh, PRBS generator, um, rather an old one, but um, do bear with me on that. I'm clocking the uh, uh, generator, the PRBS generator from our Agile synthesizer, the AS108. And I'm clocking that at uh, 1.25 gigahertz, and that's producing me a PRBS stream at 1.25 gigabits per second. Why am I doing that? Well, here I've got um, a little amplifier that I'm going to use for uh, this demonstration. Um, the little amplifier is from Analog Devices. It, it's on one of their um, uh, evaluation boards. It's the ADL5569. Uh, quite a quick little differential amplifier. Uh, I'm driving it from the PRBS source. Uh, uh, driving it on a single ended input here. I've got the other input terminated as you can see there. And then my two outputs, differential outputs, I'm sending down to the uh, SXRTO. So this is a uh, an amplifier in single ended to differential configuration. Um, let's have a look at the uh, the waveforms uh, uh, on the screen here. Uh, so I've got uh, the differential outputs, um, uh, none inverted, inverted in blue. Uh, this is my input waveform on channel three. Uh, you can see I'm actually picking that off a little bit further back in the divider chain here. Uh, so I'm picking it off here. That's about 6 dBs away from that input level. So I'm, I'm using, let's just demonstrate this. Um, I go to the channel settings on here. Channel 3, you can see I've got a little bit of attenuation scaling on there to compensate. It's 6 dB to compensate for the loss here. So the signal being measured on that screen there is uh, uh, close to what's being uh, applied here at the input to the amplifier. So we've got input, non-inverting output, non-inverting input uh, on the yellow and blue there. Um, I'm triggering on channel 4, that's the pink trace, channel 4 from this generator is uh, connected to the pattern block uh, signal from the generator and so we can see a repeating pattern within the in, within the period of uh, one cycle of pattern lock there. So that's my PRBS pattern. It's uh, two to the seven that I'm uh, that I'm using for uh, today. Okay, let's declutter this a little bit. Um, if we call up that map menu. Let's uh, find a function, arithmetic, subtract, channel 1 from channel 2. And you can see that's cluttered things <laughs> even further. But we can now turn off channels 1 and channel 2. Um, I think we've probably seen enough of channel 4 as well. So let's turn that off. And now we have the... Uh, two signals of main interest, the, the single-ended uh, input waveform and the differential output. Um, now, I am acquiring 50,000 points per, uh, per trace at the moment, so we can just as well give ourselves some more clarity by adding a zoom zone, zoom and zoom zone. Uh, let's give that a factor 
order of 20. Um, and you can see the green box here. Uh, let's drag that along um, so that we can get some bit intervals um, uh, and, a, uh, and a rather larger interval. Let's get some uh, basic measurements uh, going here. Um, so I've set up two independent margins, one for the output trace, one for the input trace, such that I can measure the same pulse in both cases. And there you go, you can see some results there. So I've got rise time, let's, let's take the average here, 69.4 on the input. And I've got uh, 88 on the output, so uh, we're beginning to be able to see the rise time of the amplifier. Let's clear that measurement menu. Let's clear the math. Turn the math here. Turn the math menu. Uh, turn channel 1 and channel 2 back on. Let's change the trigger over from pattern to clock and we can see straight away that we are beginning to uh, form our data eyes given that we are now triggering on clock rather than pattern. Um, let's, let's turn the zoom region off and now let's Auto scale that. Now, just take a little bit longer to auto scale when we have a, uh, a complex PRBS pattern to deal with, but we should sort it out. One channel at a time there. There we go. Let me turn on our diagram measurements. And let's make a measurement on channel one, NRZ. And there we go. And you can see instantly for the very last measurement that it's making in the list here, the signal to noise ratio, it's marking the eye at the point that it's measuring the one, the one noise, the uh, zero level and zero points uh, over, a, uh, over a duration of the I there. Let's switch display back to the single YT by being able to turn channel 3 off. And channel 2 concentrate just on channel one for a minute. So channel one is our non-inversion output on this uh, on this amplifier. Let me uh, let me introduce a probe to the situation. So here is the uh, this is the Pico Connect 925 probe. This is a nine gigahertz probe. It's AC coupled divided by five. Um, I'm going to connect that to channel 3, which means I'm going to remove and terminate the current connection uh, to channel 3. Let's just get that one removed. Um, so let's turn on here. Um, and first of all, uh, all I'm going to do is use the probe to probe the output connector that is currently giving us that, um, uh, that uh, yellow eye. So we're going to continue to monitor that eye and uh, add the probe to give us the same signal.
there we go so um, there you can see we've got a slight offset between the two um, the delay between the two of course at the moment is is all to do with the with, with cable lengths and uh, delays in cables rather than any uh, delay associated with the, the probe so we're we're probing um, at slightly later delay, but you can see we've got quite similar eyes there. And what I wanted to highlight in particular, if I take the trace off and we watch the yellow eye, so I'm going to take the probe off and monitor the yellow eye. Now, there we see. So when I put a low impedance probe on the uh, 50 ohm output impedance here, well actually it's not 50 ohm is it, because it's it's 50 ohm terminated at um, the input to the scope, it's 50 ohm terminated back at the uh, amplifier, so the probing point has an impedance of Tevin, an equivalent impedance of 25 ohms, and I'm loading that with a probe, and we can see that the amplitude of the yellow trace declines ever so slightly, less than a dB or so. And, um, uh, and we can see a very good match between the yellow trace and the green trace in terms of overall um, shape. We can also see that the shape of the eye is not hugely changed at all. Perhaps a little bit more overshoot when I remove the probe, perhaps a little bit less when I add the probe. Now I wanted to show you that because the Pico Connect probes have very very low residual input capacitors, typically around 250 femtofarads uh, 300 femtofarads as a, as a point of specification. So this is a this is a tiny capacitive loading, less than you will get with any other probe in anything like this performance uh, category. Um, all active probes uh, and all passive probes that I'm aware of will have a, a lot more tip capacitors, and they are therefore a lot more invasive of the signal that they are probing. So I think you'd probably accept that when I probe that yellow signal, when I reduce its amplitude slightly, I'm not going to impact on the functionality of a system in which that signal is present. So my probing of a 50 ohm transmission line is not invasive in the sense of shifting the timing significantly, or shifting wave shape, or, or uh, worst of all, in corrupting the eye to such an extent that the data flow is interrupted. The Pico Connect probes are beautifully non-invasive. Now, we can also use the probe to make some quite accurate measurements and the measurements I want to try and make are of the gain across the chip or across the amplifier itself um, and I'm just going to call up some new settings for these measurements Oops. set up Open setup. PRBS probe. Okay, so this is an entirely new uh, setup of our oscilloscope, as you can see. Um, I'm also going to move the trigger back to pattern. There we go. And then so in this setup I've got the uh, I've got the probe trace on the left here, the uh, the green trace. 
um, no signal applied at the moment. And uh, while we're doing this measurement, we're going to be able to monitor at the same time the individual outputs, the non-invert and the inverting outputs, um, so that we can always see what impact we are uh, we're having on those waveforms with the probing that we're uh, that we're doing. Now expect that to be minimal because we're using a PicoConnect low invasive uh, probe to make these measurements. So in trying to do some probes, uh, probings around this device, um, you may have noticed that um, I've got a little um, pigtail here soldered, uh, uh, soldered to the board and I I could choose to remove the two ground pins from the probe and mount uh, one of these on the pigtail uh, and then move around the board uh, on the pigtail. Of course, the pigtail has some length and is uh, slightly reductive. Uh, so, and this board has plenty of wires uh, in its ground pattern. So, actually, in this in this case, I prefer to remove. One uh, ground lead or ground pin, and I will use the other one uh, to pick up on wires uh, that happen to be close. So, uh, first signal we want is to uh, try and have a look at the uh, input waveform to the chip as close to the chip as we can get. Um, we have to bear in mind that there are any impedance defining resistors um, uh, at the input of the chip, we do have to go behind those. So let's uh, uh, do the first probing. A little bit tricky to pick up on the wires, of course. But Okay, so the signal's a little bit noisy because it's quite a small signal. So uh, let's use that to get that under control. So Using the probe, we've got ourselves a copy of the input signal. Now let's get ourselves an output signal. Notice that the um, um, the second memory has uh, placed itself on display two here, so let's just sort that out. Display channel. It's memory two. Let's that in bracket one. Um, we'll turn off channel three now. So there we go on the left-hand side, I have um, my input waveform and the two output waveforms, inverting and non-inverting, and we have those all gathered via exactly the same probe response and delay. So we can now make meaningful measurements uh, between, these, uh, between these traces 
uh, to get, for instance, um, measure trace to trace, memory three to memory one, rising to rising to one. So the delay across the device from the input to the um, output of the device is uh, at 90 picoseconds. It's not an easy measurement to make in, in any other way. Uh, we can also do memory 3 to memory 1, gain in dB. So there we go, we've got uh, 8.2 dB as a, a gain across the device uh, to its non inverting output. We can do a gain in multiplication terms or linear terms of the motor. Um, there you go, multiplication factor of uh, 2.571. Uh, we can do gain in dB from memory 3 to memory 2. Okay. So 7.258 uh, dB. So there you go. That's um, that's a uh, a method for uh, measuring um, fairly precisely uh, the gain and delay uh, across a device between points that are very close, at least, to the device itself, or actually on its pins if they are both at an appropriate impedance to do it. Uh, whereby we're achieving the same response uh, in all of the measurements. They're probing the same impedance with the same impedance via the same path, uh, um, gain of flatness and delay. And um, uh, thus we can compare the measurements and, and make meaningful uh, gain and delay measurements between them using a probe, as I said. worth pointing out, I suppose, that um, such a measurement as that, done with a single probe and a, a separate trigger, um, we could have done with our two-channel 16 gigahertz unit, uh, just as well as we have with the four-channel uh, unit here.